Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Gulliday. I am a nutritional pharmacist, which translates into a pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. And tonight, we're going to discuss some topics. I, have, I know there was a couple of questions about some health conditions, and one of them is energy. So we wanted to discuss energy and how to boost energy in your body. And what I want you to know is that that is very doable with supplementation and what you're eating. If you're low energy, that's a sign that something's going on in your body. It's a signal that you're not getting what you need. One of the number one things we look at when you have, when you have low energy are the B vitamins. And you want to make, be making sure that you're getting enough B vitamins in your body. B vitamins, a lack of B vitamins will be a decrease in energy. They will also show up as brain fog. You will notice that you're not thinking as clearly. And what you want to do when you're looking for B vitamins, you want to invest in what's referred to as the B100s. And what that really, what the 100 stands for is 100 times of the recommended daily allowance. So I'm a big fan of um, debunking what is referred to as the RDA, the recommended daily allowance because we need more than that. So the recommended daily allowance is actually calculated that if every cell in your body got exactly what it needed, it would be the how much you would need that day. But it doesn't account for a lack of absorption. It doesn't count for potential excretion that might happen too quickly or uh, maybe that one little uh, chunk of vitamin just wasn't dissolvable and the next thing you know it just kind of passes out of your GI tract. So if you're ever taking the minimum, i.e. the 100% of the RDA, you're shortchanging yourself hugely. And when we're dealing with vitamins such as, you know, as important as the B vitamins, we want to up these guys. We want the B100s. What that refers to, again, is all the Bs, and it's 100 times your basic Bs. So you're getting 100 times concentration. These are water-soluble vitamins. You never have to worry about taking too much of them. If by chance you ever did, there's one that when it hurt you, but it would cause a flush, and that's niacin. And niacin it, causing a body flush would actually be pretty helpful to your body because you're moving all the toxins out. All your capillaries would flush because you took, uh, you know, maybe too much niacin for your body to handle, and it would cause a flush. And actually, people use that to detox. So even though you could take too much niacin to have a body flush, taking too much niacin and having any sort of uh, consequences ill consequences is, is illogical. So please keep that in mind. The RDA it was recommended by uh, old school research that again doesn't apply in this day and age. And you know you need to cover, you need, what your goal is is to have enough nutri nutrients in your body that at any time if a cell's like, oh I want a thiamine, it could just open up and there, oh wow there's a thiamine. That would be ideal. So that's why we take nutrients throughout the day, we make sure that we're getting all of our bases covered. We take more than the recommended daily allowance. These are things you want to think about. One of the things I love about um, you know, the product that I work with is it's drinkable. It's pour, you know, I can mix it up and have it with me all through the day. So sipping on some sort of vitamins throughout the day I highly recommend, and in particular the B vitamins, which will address low energy. Another thing about low energy is people they get in a cycle where they don't have energy, and then they stop doing things. They stop doing things that actually give them more energy. So let, let's say you have a full-time job and you get off work and you know that going for a 20-minute walk after work is so beneficial, but you get in a bad habit of not doing it. It's going to be harder and harder for you, of course, to get off the couch. But once you start, your body starts to crave it. So you do that 20-minute walk. The next night you're looking forward to it. And if you can just get in a rhythm to continue doing those things, you'll find that it becomes easier and easier. And also, I encourage you to develop the discipline to do these things, excuse me, whether or not you want to do them. We have, sometimes we need to make ourselves do the right thing. And if you find, if you can commit that to, you know, make a commitment to yourself that you're going to make yourself do the right thing, whether you want to or not, through, you know, 20 minutes of, of dedicated uh, enjoyment. I like to refer to my physical activity as something I enjoy. So I do change it up personally. I don't do just one thing consistently. I like to practice yoga and then sometimes I like to get up early and, and go for a hike. 
um, I do have a bicycle. So for you out there that are, you know, listening and learning, think about what you enjoy doing and do it. It's, it's really that simple. And then stick with it. And don't, uh, you know, don't give up. Just keep, keep doing it. It'll become easier and it'll actually become a way of life. That's how new habits are formed is sticking with them. And over time we can, you know, really change our life and get, get into the groove, if you will. So that's a little bit about energy. I would say for anybody that is just wanting to target, hard target their energy load, you'd want to get a, you know, a B vitamin dose three times a day. So a lot of times I'll tell my patients one B100 three times a day. And you want to get those, you, you don't have to take B vitamins with or without food. It can be, it can be with or without food. So feel comfortable doing that. And I'm also a big fan, there's these great little products sold at Walgreens, they're referred to as emergencies, you can get those over the counter. And then of course most of you know we, we also, at Nutritional Pharmacists, we support another great line of products that gives you all of the nutrition you need, very, very simply, the 90 essential nutrients that you need on a day-to-day -day basis. Huge fan of that too. So circling back, I know we have um, Rebecca on the call, and Rebecca, we, we had discussed dandruff and energy, and we're going to save a topic for Thursday night, which is sleep. And we're going to talk pretty deeply about getting sleep, the importance of sleep, and what it does, of course, while you're sleeping, the awesome things that happen within your body when you're sleeping, and that's going to be Thursday night's call at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So at this point, we've discussed briefly energy. You know, my two recommendations would be making sure you're getting enough B vitamins, getting exercise, because it's a, it's a circle. Once you get the exercise, the, the feel-good endorphins get promoted, you, they get boosted, and then you feel like doing something else. Like maybe now you feel like cleaning your garage. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're like, wow, I cleaned my garage. It's going to give you more energy too. So we want to look at are we nutriating? Are we exercising? And then, of course, sleep does tie into energy. So if you're not getting good sleep, you definitely can't be banking on having good energy. So if you're someone in that current state right now, you need to cut yourself some slack because if you're not getting sleep, you're not going to have energy. So please keep that in mind. You know, we don't get to have everything without certain investments. And I know, I know we all get a little hard on ourselves and we, and we, want, we want it to work a certain way, but... The body actually is all, you know, it's a holistic, you know, system and it needs to be nurtured in certain ways for it to perform at certain levels. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and open the call. We have a testimonial and this is from Ms. Kozak who is on the call. And Rebecca, before we start, I had a question about what had happened to you. Did you have, um, in addition to the torn hip capsule, did you also have five bulging discs? Is that what you had said earlier? Um, I had five herniated discs, all of different magnitudes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have no doubt that was a very painful thing. And so would you, I'd be grateful if you would share your testimonial and what's happened for you since you started you know, nutriating and, and changing up your diet. Well, thank you for allowing me to share. I, I really appreciate it. Um, so, a, a year before I started um, on a real program of, of supplementation and new training, um, beyond just what I, you know, said, oh, I need to take this and just get something cheap over the counter, and never felt the difference. Um, but I had been in a car accident, and in addition to the compression fractures that I had experienced, um, oh goodness, 12, 13 years prior, um, that sh that MRI showed that I had uh, bone spurs and arthritis and inflammation head to toe, as if I was somebody unhealthy at 65, 70 years old. Um, From the car accident, then I got the five herniated discs in the torn hip capsule. Um, in addition to the aching, I mean, after that, I didn't feel the aching anymore because the radiating pain from the nerves being rubbing, 
rubbing against the herniated disc, um, created pain down into my arm, down into my leg. Um, it was hard to drive anywhere. It was kind of out in the country. To, so to get to anywhere, it was easy 30-minute drive, um, which was very uncomfortable. Doctor's appointments were 45 to 60 minutes away, and those were three times a week. Um, but then I started mutrating a year after my accident, and within two weeks of, of, of quality supplementation, the migraines that I had experienced 24-7 for the last year were gone. Occasionally, I'll get a little bit of a headache now, but in the past year, I could say I've maybe had three headaches, and that was just something, you know, that I had become so accustomed to all of my life, actually. And I just thought, you know, everybody had headaches. Well, another week into the supplementation then, the pain in my hip capsule had subsided. I was able to sleep through the night. Um, even if I would turn, I, I would be broken and then have a really hard time falling back to sleep because the pain hurt so bad. Um, but I was able to roll out of bed and stand up and start walking before I realized that I didn't have any more pain. Um, and, and that was just something that was, that was, I was very excited about, um, because it had been over a year and, and I thought that I was just going to have to deal with the pain. I'm allergic to all pain meds. Um, so that there wasn't something, you know, pharmaceutically that I could take to mask the pain, which in a way I'm glad. Um, and probably, well, four or five, maybe even six weeks later, the, the tingling down into my legs and, and the pain, the radiating pain, um, had subsided. Um, occasionally I would get some tingling as I'd be driving, um, long distances. But now, a year later, I don't even have the tingling anymore. I can sit in a car 1,400 miles with just a few stops um, multiple times in the last three months. And it's just amazing how the only thing that I changed was removing gluten from my diet and supplementation. That's it. Nothing else. I didn't have any type of, you know, real manipulating or massage therapy, nothing like that. It was, it was just the, the supplementation. And um, I had never felt any, any change with any other, even if it was another drug sales company that offered supplements. I had never felt anything different. And now... I would never go a day without um, being on my 90 for life with all the new trips. I just, I love it. I love waking up in the morning feeling good, ready to go. And before I would dread it because it hurt so bad every movement I took. Rebecca, and that's, that's just, yeah, yeah, living in that level of pain. And I want to reiterate, you had said that how quickly had your migraines gone away? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yep. And that, yeah, yeah it's so such a great story. So inspiring. You know, and I know what would have happened with someone like Rebecca if she would have stayed in the modern medical model. You know, they would have started giving her pain meds, and admittedly, she's allergic to things, but, you know, a, a regular patient, I see this all the time, you guys, they come in the pharmacy. They're limping, uh, horrible body posture, um, honestly, you know, bad attitudes. And it, there's multiple reasons. First off, they're in horrible pain. That's obviously going to give you a bad attitude. But second, these substances that theoretically stop pain, they really don't stop it. I, I know I'd love to have somebody on here that's lived with chronic pain to talk about it. They just kind of numb you out or buzz you out to the pain. But you know what? These substances are addictive. And now these people, not only are they dealing with pain, now they're de dealing with physical and psychological withdrawal 
from these medications that are easily abusable. And if you're in pain, I can see why you'd be abusing them. So, you know, it just starts this whole cycle. It's a it's a lose lose cycle that we have going on in this country, and the opioid epidemic that we have rampant. These medications end up in in parents, you know, in their medicine cabinets. The kids are trying them out. You know, I've told this story before, but in 1999 when I graduated, we were prescribing a fair amount of pain relievers. You know, I'd say maybe. 30% of the prescriptions that were leaving the pharmacy were in that category. Now it's probably 60 to 70%. Yes, we do a lot on, you know, chronic medications too, a lot of unnecessary chronic medications that can treat, you know, with nutrients you can treat these conditions and reverse a lot of this disease. Yet the pain, you know, the pain medication volume that is released out of pharmacies, it's unbelievable, it's staggering. So these medications end up in cabinets, and the epidemic, the opioid epidemic hadn't started. The abuse had not started in 1999, but within about five to seven years of practicing, I started to see it. I started seeing kids that were, you know, 16, 17 years old. They were addicted to tramadol. That was one of the first ones I saw. Um, and then later in my practice, I started to meet early 20-year-olds that had already been in rehab for opiate addiction. And that was not happening 20 years ago. And other people on this call know that. Other people listening to this know that that was not common. You know what? It's common now. And I want us all to start dealing with this. I want us all to start being proactive on ways to stop this from happening. And there are so many options out there now. And as a community and as a nation, we can start addressing this. So thank you for listening today. And we always want you to reach out to us and give us your feedback or questions. So we'll definitely be seeing you Thursday at 6 p.m. on Facebook.